Hey guys, uh, we are now finally ready to get some more shortcuts in terms of calculating derivatives, and so this video will talk about the product and quotient rules. Alright, so we've already seen this for sums and differences and scalars, right? So the derivative of a sum or difference is the sum or difference of the derivatives, and if we multiply by a scalar and then take the derivative, it's the same as taking the derivative first and then multiplying by the scalar. So, maybe we would hope that it would be very easy for products. Maybe it's just the product of the derivatives, but this is not the case, right? Because the derivative of x squared is 2x, and if you view x squared as x times x, that's not going to be the derivative times the derivative, which would just be 1 times 1. So it's not that easy. Okay, so here is the product rule. So the derivative of the product of f of x and g of x is you take the derivative of the first times the original second plus the original first times the derivative of the second. And basically this is because there's an interplay between uh, the rate of the product. You need to think of it changing in both directions, but you still have that original bit hanging on. So let's see an example with linear functions just to see how this actually works and maybe justify that this is true. Okay, so the reason we can look at an example like this is we can actually just multiply it out and use the power rule as well. So here we have 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 2, which is 6x squared plus 3x minus 4x, so minus x, minus 2. Okay, so from the power rule, we get the derivative 12x minus 1. Now let's see with the product rule, what we get. Well, derivative of the first times the original second plus original first, 2x plus 1, times derivative of the second, which is 3. So this is 6x minus 4 plus 6x plus 3, or 12x minus 1. So they do agree here, and this is going to be true in general. Okay, so let's do a couple examples here. So the first one, we have the derivative of x squared plus 1 times the natural log of x. So again, we split this up. Derivative of the first, that's going to be 2x here, times the original ln x plus original x squared plus 1 times derivative of the natural log, which we know is 1 over x. And in this case, I'm not really worried about simplification. Having it in this form makes it much easier to see that you're using the product rule to get this derivative. Okay, so now let's look at 2e to the x sine x. So we can kind of split this off into two pieces, have the 2e to the x lumped together, and then the sine x. All right, so the derivative of the first, well, remember, constants are just pulled out, so that's going to be 2, and e to the x is its own derivative. So that is just back to the original function, plus 2e to the x stays the same, and then derivative of sine x is cosine x. Okay, and of course you could factor out the 2e e the x, but this is fine as well. Okay, so your first exercise with the class prep is to find the derivative of 6x cubed times cosine x. Okay, so the next thing to look at is the quotient rule. So what's the derivative of f of x over g of x? Well, it's not going to be f prime over g prime. Similar to the product rule, life is not quite that easy. So an exit easy example would be 2 is the same thing as 2x over x. Well, this has derivative 0. This has, from that fake rule, would be 2 over 1, and 0 is definitely not 2 over 1. So, again, we have to do something a little more complicated. We can actually prove the quotient rule from the product rule. Okay, so let h of x be f of x over g of x. And we want to find h prime of x, right? We want to find the derivative of this quotient. So how do we do this? Well, we can write f of x by multiplying over by the denominator as h of x times g of x. And then use the product rule. So we already know this derivative. f prime is h prime times g plus h times g prime. Okay, we want to end up getting h prime by itself. So let's go ahead and subtract over. So minus h of x, g prime of x is h prime 
g. So another way to write h, of course, is f of x over g of x. And to get a common denominator on the left, we can write f prime of x as f prime times g over g minus, again, h is f over g. So this becomes f of x g prime of x over g of x equals h prime of x g of x. So what we can do is we can combine the numerator on the left and then divide by g. And so what do we end up with? We end up with this, f prime of x g of x minus f of x g prime of x all over g of x squared. Uh, so a lot of people end up memorizing this as low d high minus high d low. So the d meaning derivative there. So notice we have low is in the denominator times derivative of the numerator, or d high, minus high, or the numerator, times d low, derivative of the denominator, over low squared. Okay? Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. So first we're going to look at the derivative of the natural log of x over x squared. So low d high, so we take the derivative of the top times the original bottom minus derivative of the bottom times the original top all over the original bottom squared, right? And so this just becomes x minus 2x natural log of x all over x to the fourth. Okay, so now let's look at x e to the x over cosine x. So notice when we take the derivative of the top, that's going to require a product rule, right? Since we do have a product there. So when we take derivative of the top, it's our original times derivative. Okay, well, derivative of e to the x is e to the x plus derivative of x is 1 times e to the x all times cosine of x, right? Derivative of the top times the bottom minus, well, original top x e to the x times derivative of the bottom, which is negative sine x all over cosine squared. And then this simplifies a little bit. So we have a factor of x and a factor of 1 in front of our e to the x. We can pull that out. e to the x times x plus 1 cosine x. And the two negatives make a positive. So we have plus x e to the x sine x all over cosine squared x. All right. Okay, so for your second exercise in the class prep, find the derivative using the quotient rule of x cubed plus 2x over the natural log of x. All right, that's all I have. Thanks for watching.